Hey, hi everyone. Trust you all are doing well and welcome back to another lesson. For those that continuing so far watching my videos, thank you guys for watching and thank you for the likes. And yes, in this one, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a user seeder for our admins and normal users. So that when an admin logs in, we will be able to go to the admin page and yes, instead of creating a new user as well. So let's say for instance, you create your application. Now what you want to do is when the application starts off, you want to kind of create users from the start who's going to be admin so that nobody else can just register as an admin. All right. But anyways, let's start off with our Cedar. Now the thing is with your installation with Laravel and Jetstream, you will normally get your, and under the database, you'll get your factories. As you can see, it comes with a user factory as well. And under migrations, under the Cedar, it comes with a database seeder here as well. Now the thing is what we want to do, this database seeder will be responsible for actually seeding your database. Now what we want to do now is we want to create that user seeder in order just to seed the users. All right, so let's create that data, uh, that seeder. So what we want to do is we want to open up our terminal, not the website. <laughs> let's open up our terminal. Okay, so what we want to do is PHP, others in make all right and what we do is we make seed and then we can just say user seeder all right now what you can do you could have named it use it table seeder all right so you can do it like this users table seeder you could do it like this as well that's all correct or you could just say users seeder all right, in my case, I'm just going to call it user seeder. All right, or you can call it users table seeder. Well, as the users is the table in our database, and the table is obviously just referencing that and saying that this is a seed. All right, so let's do it like this. Okay, so let's create it. All right, so now that is created, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to that seeder right there. So in here. All right, what is the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to call in that user model. All right. All right, so as you can see, it imports it at the top. Otherwise, we need to put in the full name path to that user. All right, and on that is a factory method. So the factory, as you guys remember, it comes out with our installation. All right, so in that factory, what we want to do is we want to create. All right, we want to create uh admin user okay so i'm just going to call it the name name is going to be admin just for simplicity sake admin and the email is going to be admin at email admin at example admin at example.com okay failed to expand abbreviation no problem Right, the next one is going to be obviously the password. Now, the password we can do is we're going to use bcrypt to actually hash our password. So, bcrypt, okay. So, inside there, the password is just going to be password, but when you go to the database, it will be hashed, okay. And then we obviously need to add that type. You guys remember the type of user that we want to create as well. All right, and that is going to be the user admin, as you can see right there. So we want the that user be the type of admin. No, I don't need to put a semicolon in there. I don't know why I done that. Semicolon needs to be here. All right, so we're just going to create that one admin user. Now the next thing is we need to create that user factory. So just seed our database. Let's say with five normal users factory and in here we're just going to do account now the thing is i just want to add the cedar as well because if you do them on your own you kind of can create them on your own as well all right so let's do with the count of 10 and you can create 
like this. All right, so we're just going to create 10, but then I've got, now let's just create five. I don't want too, too many. All right, you can do it like this, or you can just put the five in there, and you don't need to do this, this part right there. Okay, but I'm just doing this for learning purposes. That's why I just do it like this. Okay, the next part is now we're all done and set up. Now in our database seeder right here, we need to reference the seeder that we just created right there. Otherwise, when the database seeder runs, it doesn't know what to do. As you can see, even in here, they got the the factory with the ten. Okay, so you can put your inside here. You can just put the five. But I just want to do this for learning purposes. All right, so let's call that seeder. So how do we call that? So we do it like this. Dot call. <laughs> then we're going to call it users table seeder class. Okay. So that's basically what it's going to do. So when it when we call in the PHP artisan migrate dash dash seed, it will actually Bring call the seeder and actually see the database. All right, so let's see if it works. All right, so open up our terminal. This is what we're going to do is PHP artisan migrate fresh. So the fresh is basically what it's going to do, it's going to drop all your databases. So all this the uh, tables inside your database. It's basically going to remove it, going to make it blank, and then it's going to start. Uh, fresh again and then basically when it, we're going to start afresh we're just going to do this with the seed now i just want to do it as a, a gotcha moment all right when you do this only do it in production not when you deploy it to the server okay so when while you're developing it please don't migrate your database fresh because then basically what it will do, it will wipe out every data that you have in your database. All right? And you don't want to do that. But while you're doing your development, you can do that, start afresh, and all that kind of stuff, just to protect your database integrity and everything as well. All right? So let's leave it at that. So let's see if everything is done. All right? So in our forums, we want to go to our user. So as you can see, it created that admin user with at adminexample.com with a type of three. And you can see all the other users that we created, that extra five. So we got six users in it. And you can see that partial that with the bcrypt is hashed as well. And obviously the email, when you do that, it will automatically verify the email. All right. So let's try and log in with the admin and example.com and go to its dashboard. Right, so we at our forum now we are rubbing our hands together and hopefully everything works. So let's go to login. And if we go to the admin at example uh, dot com and, and if we type in that password that was hash, which is password, and if we log in, fingers crossed everything works. Yay! And as you can see, it brings us to that admin route right there on top. So it actually goes to the admin page. And is this Indigo? Let's make the color more pronounced. No, no. This is the part right there. As you can see, the admin page. So it shows us that it's on the admin page. If you guys remember, I made it Indigo 100 right there. Okay. So that's all good. So let's log out and log in as a normal user. Okay. Um. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to create another uh, user in our seeder called John Doe. So that will be our normal user. Otherwise, I need to remember all the emails. Okay. So in Visual Studio Code, let's go to our user seeder. I'm just going to copy this one down. Okay. So I'm just going to call this guy John Doe. I like John. Uh, John at example.com. And we're just going to go do it a password. And this one, we're just going to do a default like this. All right. So we know that because if you want to log in as a normal user, we're going to use John at example and admin that one right there. Okay. So let's see our database again, refresh and do that. 
All right, so all done. So let's go back. Let me refresh. It's all good. So let's log in as John at example.com with the password. All right, as you can see, John redirected to the dashboard. It's good. So this is basically what the functionality that we're working on. So this is what we're looking for. And if we log out and go to the admin, log in again. So the admin at example. You guys must say if the keyboard noise is a little bit too hectic for you. I'll try and change it because I got a new keyboard and it's kind of making a little bit more noise. Uh, my apologies. All right. Now, the next thing that you're going to do, as you can see, it brings us to our admin right there. All right. So this is it for this lesson, guys. If you like the video, please give it a like. If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask them in the comment section. I'll try and answer them. All right. Thank you guys for watching and like the video if you like it. Don't like it. Give it a thumbs down. Uh, but if you do find it useful, please give it a like so that others might find it as well. All right. That's the only reason I say it. It's not for my own ego. It's basically so that you, Google will just display it to more people so that other people might find it. That's the only reason. I'm just a normal nobody. And yes. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.